Hey, I'm Alan Baker, the Cellar Rat, and welcome to the Pinot 2.0 video podcast. Well, the rain has squelched my plans to get the grapes out of the vineyard. So I've been hanging around here at Crush Pad, and I've seen this man, David Dane, beavering away upon many batches of wine. So I figured I would take this opportunity while we're waiting for the rains to go away and the vineyards to dry up to hang out a little bit and figure out what's going on with all of his wines, because I know he's got a lot going on. So David, if I could ask you to take a quick break here. Tell me a little bit about just what you got going on. How many wines do you have going here? Well, thanks for asking. We have uh, currently uh, seven wines in the hopper, so to speak, for 2006. We have an Amber Ridge, mm -hmm. going to repeat our American beauty. We have Rancho Anaveras, which we just pressed today when I saw you earlier. And we've got our Brousseau Pinot from the Chalon region. And these are all different vineyards, California vineyards, yes, right? Yes, they are. That's okay. right. All of them are uh, up and down California. Mm -hmm. We're lucky to have representation from the northern part of the state all the way down to the central coast with our Pinot Noir. And we make two Syrahs from uh, from Las Madras in uh, Sonoma and from White Hawk in Santa Barbara. So, And are all the grapes in the winery now? Um, would that they were. <laughs> Close to it. Uh, we've got a few more clones coming in from Amber Ridge. The 115 clone should be in early next week. Uh, now the rain has delayed things a little bit, but uh, it won't hurt it to fatten up a bit. That'll be okay. And uh, just for folks, we're going to get to the clones later on in this series. Uh, for those of you nerdy enough to know what that is, you'll appreciate the 115 comment, but we'll get, to, we'll get there eventually. Um, so how did, how did you land at Crushpad? What's your, what's your background? Are you a winemaker by trade? Where, where did you come to this? Well, actually, my education is in microbiology and chemistry, and I've always been a bit of a geek with it. I've loved making wines in my garage, and I actually have had a marketing plan for a winery since about 2002. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, I discovered Crushpad and found out I wouldn't actually have to buy wine or plant anything, <laughs> that I could actually come here and do the work and find great grapes that are already grown by great viticulture. You still have a day job. What was your what was your day job, or what is your day job? Well, I'm a sales manager for a rather large biotech company. So, okay, so you you've got a, a bunch of batches of wine going on right now at various stages. Uh, part of the reason I wanted to talk with you is you were one of the lucky ones to get fruit from the Winsel Vineyard, from which I'm getting fruit for the Pinot 2.0 mm -hmm. Pinot Noir. Yes. So, talk a little bit about what you've seen out of this, out of these grapes. Now that you've got them in, they've been doing a cold soak, oh, yes, which yes. you're extracting flavor and color from the grapes here in, the, in these bins, and you're pushing the must down to get get that flavor and color out of there. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you're seeing out of this fruit well, right I, out of the bin. I really love the, the the Wenzel Vineyard. It's a very beautiful place up in Mendocino. Uh, lovely mountains. Uh, lovely area, lovely hillside, and uh, really good organic uh, viticulture. The uh, manager up there is terrific. Uh, Casey Hartlip is the, uh, the vineyard manager, and Roland Wenzel is the owner. I really like what I'm seeing in terms of the ripeness and the flavors. And the reason we're doing a cold soak is because when you make wine, of course, you over time extract flavors from the grapes. And you do that uh, in a transition from an aqueous solution to an alcoholic solution. I think we all know that you know wine has alcohol in it. You also extract. So this is that biotech stuff yeah, coming yes, through, this right? This is the really highly technical stuff here. But <laughs> we, we also know that uh, we're going to extract over a temperature differential. Also, it's going to start cold, and it'll get warm, and then it'll get cool again as it goes through that aqueous to alcohol phase also. And so you get different phases and different types of extractions. So as you taste this fruit, what are you, what are you sensing? I'm really excited about this. I love Anderson Valley in the first place. And you get just a little bit of that lovely Mendocino earth going on, but that'll show up even more later. And some lovely bright cherries and incredibly good acidity. That's one thing I really like is ripe flavors with good acidity and actually rather modest uh, alcohol levels uh, for California fruit. That's what I'm seeing in Anderson Valley this year. So at some point, we all have the experience when you just realize you don't have any choice but to make wine. Mm -hmm. Do you have that moment, or when did you, what, what actually finally snagged you and made you drop all this cash? <laughs> <laughs> well, I met this gentleman named Brian Loring who is a wonderful man. Uh, we call him the Lama Shaman, or at least I do. A uh, great guy, uh, very enthusiastic about Pinot Noir, and very willing to help anybody who's interested. You can, he loves to have people come help him make wine. And I was conversing with him via email and told him that I was a amateur making wine in the garage and that I'd always been fascinated by commercial production of wine and that I loved his wines. His reply was, well, come see me sometime, and we'll put you to work and show you how to do this on a large scale. I said, dude, don't tease me, because I'll be there. And he said, I'm not kidding. Show up. 
Uh, I did. I got on a plane. I flew out, and oh, it was hook, line, and seeker. I absolutely loved it. Uh, loved making wine. Loved working with the people uh, who make wine, and just uh, haven't looked back. And what year was that? Uh, that was actually 2004. While we were doing it at the same time at Crush Pad, because uh, he hooked me up with Crush Pad actually. So I started working with Brian, and then came up here. So. Well, I've, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on some of this fruit, so uh, we're going to try to wrap this up here, but thank you for your time, and good luck with all your wines this year. Thank you very much. I, I'm sure you'll do a great job with Wenzel also. <laughs> okay, so that's it for this Pinot 2.0 video podcast. I'll be back with a wrap-up of Harvest, which hopefully will happen any day now. I'm Alan Baker, the Cellar Rat, and I will be back with you soon.